All right, now for more on this, we are joined in by Mr. Brahma Chalani, who is a strategic affairs expert. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Chalani, for joining us. Now, India, after this dastardly terror attack yesterday, has in fact come up with some very specific measures that, that it will, in fact, employ straight away. So let me begin, sir, by asking you, are you happy with the measures that were announced by Arun Jaitley after the Cabinet Committee meeting on security earlier this morning? Well, he has said that the military forces have been given the freedom to respond. The question is that before we contemplate military action of any kind, why isn't the government of India downgrading diplomatic relations with Pakistan? It's a terrorist state. Why not label Pakistan a terrorist state, kick out its high commissioner from New Delhi, downsize its bloated mission in New Delhi, which is infested with ISI agents. Let's begin with some elementary diplomatic moves. Unfortunately, I did not hear a single diplomatic action by the government of India other than the withdrawal of MFN, which mm -hmm. is a large symbolic step because it will not materially make a difference to Pakistan. This will not impose costs on Pakistan. What India ought to be doing is to impose tangible costs on Pakistan. It, it should also seek to diplomatically isolate Pakistan. Now, to ask for the international community to isolate Pakistan, when India is unwilling to label the sponsor of terrorism as a terrorist state, is to expect something that will not materialize. Let's begin with Indian action so that mm -hmm. the world community responds to what India is doing. All right, but at this point of time, you know, when temperatures are pretty high, do you think cutting off diplomatic relations with Pakistan is the right way ahead? I did not say cut off diplomatic relations at all. Mm -hmm. I'm suggesting downgrading diplomatic relations with a known terrorist state like Pakistan. All right. Downgrading means they should not be having 100 or so personnel in New Delhi High Commission. Is this, a, you know, is this a terrorist state or a normal state for India? We, why should diplomatic relations with Pakistan still be maintained at the level of ambassadors, that is high commissioners? Right. Right, that, that, that is an interesting distinction that you've drawn. And also the other big announcement as a part of you know, the measures that were announced by Arun Jaitley earlier this morning is that the most favoured nation state is that had been accorded by India to Pakistan in 1996. That stands cancelled. How badly do you think that will affect Pakistan? The trade between India and Pakistan is largely conducted through third countries like the UAE. And the direct impact of the withdrawal of MFN status mm -hmm. on Pakistan would be minimal. I think what we ought to be doing is to do things that would send the message to Pakistan and its all-powerful military generals that India means business. All right. That India, that India's patience has run out, that India has been very patient, has, has sought to improve relations with Pakistan, but its peace overtures have been repeatedly rebuffed. Now, after the massacre of more than 40 Indian Jawans, it can't be business as usual for India. And I think that we should, besides downgrading diplomatic relations, we should suspend the permanent Indus Commission, mm -hmm. which is a central institution under the Indus Waters Treaty. So we should undertake actions that send a clear meaning to Pakistan. Do you, do you think that India's approach where we are trying to isolate Pakistan internationally may not bear fruit? What you're suggesting is that India will have to try and put pressure on Pakistan through the treaties that we have, such as the Indus Water Treaty. Is, is this something that, that can even be done, considering that this is an international treaty and we are bound by it? Well, there are two things here. If India is unwilling to isolate Pakistan, how can it expect the international community to isolate Pakistan? If India maintains full diplomatic relations with Pakistan, how do you expect other countries like the United States to downgrade the relations with Pakistan. Right. And second point is that I am not suggesting withdrawal from a treaty. Mm -hmm. I am suggesting 
suspending an institution that facilitates implementation of the treaty under international law if one party engages in renegade or roguish actions that undermine the very basis of a treaty mm -hmm. other party has the right international law to suspend its obligations or to suspend an institution that is that has been established for implementing the terms of that treaty so i am only asking for action in accordance with international law because india is not a rogue state india will comply fully with international law right but india will invoke the provisions under the vienna convention of international law to suspend the permanent indus commission that's my suggestion all right interesting interesting and the other issue that i want to talk to you mr brahma chalani is is the silence the obstinate silence of china after the pulwama attack now in the past you know for three occasions china has in fact blocked the designation of masood azhar as an internationally designated terrorist at the united nations and so far china has not responded on the pulwama attack what are we to read in this silence from china first china's culpability in the pulwama massacre of indian jawans is unmistakable china has been shielding pakistan's export of terrorism including by blocking un action against pakistan based terrorists masood mm -hmm. azhar is only one example and moreover pakistan has the pakistan's use of militants takes a leaf out of the chinese playbook against india it was the chinese who first trained and armed india's naga and mizo gorillas starting from the 1950s so china's asymmetric warfare model was much later emulated by pakistan right. and today china is shielding pakistan's asymmetric warfare against india and we need to spotlight china's capability and its actions in aiding and abetting pakistan's sponsorship of terrorism against india its capability in the massacre of indian jawans is something that should not be ignored by the indian establishment i think that's a very significant point there do do continue to stay on with this mr brahmachalani meanwhile i'm told that we're also joined in by my colleague siddhant sibel um and siddhant if i could ask you on this the fact of the matter is all right i'm told that we have lost the line with siddhant sibel there uh, mr chalani let let me bring you back on this now the issue is pretty straightforward here now india time and again every time there is a terror attack it says that it wants to isolate pakistan at the global stage it has submitted proof to pakistan it has happened pretty much every time there's been a major terror attack how will things be different this time ran or are we again doing exactly the same thing like what we did after uri after nagrota after after even the mumbai terror attacks where we've given proof to pakistan we expect pakistan to crack down on the terrorists and they have never done this well you ask a very relevant question after the mumbai attacks which were supposed to be india's 26 uh, in, 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 you know they were supposed to be india's 911 how did india respond india responded not by any kind of imposition of costs on pakistan mm -hmm. but by bombing pakistan with dossiers dossiers that contain information about pakistan's role in the mumbai attacks so instead of responding to what pakistan had done we engaged in dossier bombing when pathan could happen we actually shared with pakistan in real time communications intercepts that showed that the attackers at the pathan court air base right were talking to their pakistani handlers while the attack was going on and we shared that vital information with pakistan in the naive hope that the pakistani government would crack down on these terrorists so let's hope that having learned some lessons from our past naivet that we become wiser and that we will handle this particular massacre which is a not a 
tragedy, as somebody described it. Mm -hmm. Tragedy happens because of a natural disaster. This is a massacre. Absolutely. This is, a, this is, this is, a, this is an indirect declaration of war on India. And let's hope that this indirect declaration of, of war on India is responded to by India in a wise manner that helps to eliminate Pakistan's cost-free policy of sponsoring terrorism against India. Absolutely indeed. That, that is a very relevant point that you raised there. And the other issue that I want to talk, want to, talk to you about, Mr. Chilani, is, is the strategy that was employed by the terrorists this time round. Uh, generally, when these terrorists carry out a terror attack in, in the Kashmir Valley that we've seen in recent years, it, it is you know, trying to shoot from a distance. But in this instance, what is ha being used is a car that was an SUV with... Uh, an IED fitted onto it that was rammed into another device. And this is a clear difference in terms of the strategy that was used by the terrorists. How dangerous do you think this is? Well, it's no surprise that they used a new method. Mm -hmm. In order to defeat India's defensive measures, Pakistan and its proxies repeatedly changed their targets and methods. So we should not be surprised that they have adopted an innovative way of attacking an Indian convoy. But make no mistake, this was not the job of one terrorist. A number of people were employed in this operation, a number Absolutely. of terrorists. And obviously they procured the explosives and they got their training from across the border. So a lot of people were involved in an operation that has caused massive fatalities and injuries on the Indian security side. All right. Now, you know, the question that, that you know, a lot of people across India would be pondering upon is post the Uri attack, there was a surgical strike that was conducted. And this morning we heard the prime minister speak and he said that the armed forces have been given a free hand to respond in the manner that they deem fit. Can we expect another action like the surgical strike being taken up by India? Well, there are two things here. First, we should have never hyped the first surgical strike that happened. There was no need to overplay mm -hmm. that surgical strike. Because the purpose of any surgical strike is to deter the enemy from carrying out more terrorist attacks now, if the surgical strike actually does not stop further attacks by Pakistan, obviously its purpose has not been fulfilled. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the second point is that whatever action the Indian military intends to take now mm -hmm. should be taken quietly without any kind of uh, hype. And it's impact should be such that concentrated pain should be should have been imposed on Pakistan so as to deter right. so as to deter attacks against Indian forces and against Indian civilians. But before before we carry out any military strikes on Pakistan, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, it's very important for India to adopt peaceful measures to punish Pakistan. And these peaceful measures range from diplomatic actions to riparian actions that relate to the Indus Waters Treaty. Let's employ peaceful methods to signal that it's no longer business as usual. As far as the military actions are concerned, they should take place as and when the time is opportune, as and when the enemy is not expecting an Indian action. Only then should an Indian military action be staged. Right now, the enemy is expecting an Indian military action. Absolutely. So let's now focus on peaceful measures. Absolutely. I think you've summed it up very beautifully, beautifully for us, Mr. Brahmachalani. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on this broadcast in Vyond. <laughs>